I got this job, my brother, who's a principal trumpet in Chicago Symphony and has been playing professionally for 15 years, um, <laughs> when, I, when I got the job, he was, you know, of course ecstatic and really excited, but I remember this one thing that will always stick with me that he said, he said, all right, now you're really going to have to learn how to practice. You know, making finals and auditions and, and getting through that really tough test is, is an important skill set to learn, and it's a great way to practice. Having to produce and play 150 concerts a year like we do, um, and every single one at the highest possible level is very difficult, very challenging, um, and unbelievably rewarding. A lot of Arthur Fiedler, you know, was was playing on our on our CD players and our our LPs. And as I was growing up, when I was 10, 11, 12 years old, really starting to figure out that I really loved brass playing and loved the trumpet. Um, you know, John Williams film scores and his pops recordings uh, with the orchestra were definitely in my boombox. You know, uh, growing up, so it's. And it was, you know, uh, several John Williams scores that I would uh, listen to constantly. And, you know, I'd, I'd see Jurassic Park or Star Wars and, and hear the trumpet playing and just be like, man, I just, I want to be able to make that sound. So, and then, you know, to wind up here, and it, I've played a dozen concerts with him already in just a few years. It's every time he, he gets on stage and starts conducting, I look at him and it's very rare that you get to interact directly with someone and say, wow, you were my inspiration for where I am now. So it's... Pretty cool. I like to look ahead, um, particularly um, at our week in New York that we spend every year, because uh, I've got a lot of friends from school in New York um, that always come to the concerts. And that week in particular is is pretty incredible. Uh, we're doing um, Bartok Concerto for Orchestra, uh, Mahler's Third Symphony. We're doing two nights of Wagner, uh, and a really fantastic piece that um, was actually written for the Boston Symphony uh, that. Uh, it doesn't get performed nearly enough. It's Hindemith's music for strings and brass, which is just, uh, it's an unbelievable showpiece for both sections. And to put those programs together is just, it's incredible. I've got a few students at New England Conservatory and I'm doing some time at uh, Boston University in the spring uh, and love it. It's, it's great to, to see the, the talent that's coming up through school now is, it's really mind boggling how incredible these players are now. And, and to sort of see that I've, I've only, I'm only separated from them by four or five years uh, is, is, is cool. You know, it's pretty, a lot of times I'll get a student that's, that's 20 or 21, comes in and sits down. He's emailed me for a lesson and, and we meet each other for the first time and he sort of gives me this look like, you sure I'm, you're the person I'm taking a lesson from? I'm like, I'm like yeah, yeah, I know I look, look young, but hope I have enough to offer. It, it's something I really enjoy and I'm challenged by the students that I teach. Um, you know, being able to demonstrate whatever they, they bring in to work on, whatever difficulties they're having um, on the spot, having to produce and, and show them um, what they're doing right or help them with something that they're struggling with as, is a great challenge for us as, as teachers. And so it keeps me on my toes for sure. But uh, actually in my free time, I, uh, I'm a personal trainer. Um, I'm a, a personal trainer and coach uh, at a gym here in town called CrossFit Boston, and um, I sp spend a lot of time doing that. Um, I'm kind of a, uh, you know, a, a health nut, I guess you could say. Um, so we, I'll see about 100 to 200 uh, clients, athletes a week. Um, spend a lot of time one-on-one -on -one and in class settings, um, just leading them through workouts and, and mobility exercises and nutrition counseling, um, and. It's something I really enjoy and, and keeps me honest and it allows me to, to keep my own fitness and health in check while helping other people. And I find that my uh, skills that I've learned and, and have been able to hone teaching privately, teaching uh, trumpet uh, carries over and vice versa. Well, the National Brass Symposium uh, is an event that my brother and I sort of uh, co-created, co-founded, um, and it, its aim is to bring the greatest brass players in the world um, together for one weekend of concerts and master classes and private lessons um, and just general collaboration. And uh, we've had, uh, for the past two years, we've had uh, players from the Boston Symphony, uh, Chicago Symphony, New York Philharmonic, Cleveland Orchestra, Philadelphia Orchestra, Atlanta Symphony, 
Los Angeles Philharmonic, San Francisco Symphony. Um, you know, the greatest brass players uh, in the world come and share their time, and they're all they're all so willing to do it. is is one of one of the coolest parts. The fact that they're all so gung ho about giving back. It's a, different, it's a different time now than it was 10 years ago in terms of marketing and, and how to draw people in and, and how to get people interested in your product. And I think uh, the accessibility of YouTube and the internet um, sort of made us get creative about how we wanted to market the National Brass Symposium. Um, so, and I'm, you can ask the guys in my section and, and in the back row. Um, I'm kind of a goofy guy. I, I, I don't like to sit still very much. I, I don't take myself too seriously. Um, and uh, I sort of gave them an opportunity to do the same thing with our warm-up video. So I, I, I wrote sort of a loose script um, and, and just I'd ask some guy that'd say, hey, do you mind reading a few lines from this script? And they'd say, they're sort of unsure at first, like, yeah, sh sure, I'll be like, uh, you know, a couple minutes, no problem. So I'd, I'd say, you know, just say this line. And they'd say it. Uh, and they'd say, well, no, no, wait, can I do it again? And I'd say, okay, sure, let's do it again. And they'd do it, and it was great. It would get funnier. And they'd say, wait, can I, do, I, can I add this thing? I want to try this. Tell us what the warm-up means to each of you. Well, well you know, well, 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 it's my first term. And flexibilities and long talks. You dip one every day. And it's only important. It does not last about 20 minutes. Thank you. That was very helpful. Well, it started as sort of an idea that I had. All the rest of the guys in the, in the section really made it what it was. So, you know, to see Ben Wright doing headstands <laughs> while Tom Siders is spinning around and Steve Lang is 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 straight faced, give, you know, giving you good information. It's uh, it's it was really cool to see that side of of my colleagues that you don't get to see very often unless they're sort of given the impetus to do it. The warm up, yeah, it's by far the most important part of my day. I can't really even function as a human being without it. It's very specific to my needs, both as a trumpet player and as a professional musician. <laughs> 